good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Nick, and I uh, lead the uh, visual analytics group in uh, the University of Limerick. Um, we call ourselves Visual Insight, and uh, uh, we are based in the Department of Computer Science Information Systems. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an academic talk at the end now. Um, my talk is on visualization of large sparse networks. Not always sparse, but large uh, networks. And um, the, what we have been playing with in my research group is the trade-off between uh, speed and quality, or how how much we can simplify a network visualization algorithm before the quality drops, um, which could be, uh, that could be considered a uh, basic research, fundamental research, um, mathematical joy kind of problem. But on the other hand, it's also very practical, because when you want uh, an overview of your large network on the screen, of course, it's always nice to have it as fast as possible. Um, first of all, uh, the work that I'm going to present here uh, to you is um, uh, uh, work that I do together with my PhD students, Farsha Tusi and Azadin Alakrot. Uh, so I, I need to mention them because they're, they're, they're big contributors in what I'm going to, here to present to you. Um, first, the, the, the visualization of big data problem. Obviously, intuitively, the more data we have, uh, the better models we can build. But of course, we know that with uh, a lot of data come a lot of problems with first the management of the data. We have to manage this big data so we can work with it um, efficiently, effectively. And from the point of view of visualization, there are a number of problems that uh, arise when you have a very large amount of data that you want to visualize. Uh, whether you have done some uh, predictive analytics in advance and you want to explore uh, the results in, in the visualization, or you want to involve the human more in, in, in uh, making the prediction by presenting the visualization first and allowing the human to interact with this visualization. Um, so th the problems are, uh, of course, clutter when you have a very large data set. If you want to show the whole data set on screen, it, the picture might be cluttered, uh, the performance, performance may drop, it may become very slow, uh, the algorithms that you use may become very slow, they may not scale up very well, as it happens with the most common algorithms that are freely available, easily available, and well known. And um, of course, if you decide to fight the clutter and you decide to analyze first and show the important bits, as one of the previous speakers mentioned, uh, you may actually uh, lose some information, and you may show something on screen that is not important. Um, and if you say, OK, I don't have this problem, I have this large screen, and maybe I have two of these, and I can show my whole data set here, uh, that, that's still not a, not a solution, because uh, a human being can't um, that doesn't have this cognition, uh, this level of cognition to see everything that is displayed on a such, a such a large screen. Um, well, the, the way to fight this, the way to solve the, the problems, is uh, the standard solution or standard methodology uh, would be uh, the one suggested by Ben Schneiderman in 1996, which is, sounds pretty recent, but in terms of visual analytics is an ancient times. Um, he, ben Schneiderman is one of the um, one of the founders of uh, the field of information visualization back in the 1980s, and uh, so he he defined this uh, simple information seeking mantra, which says oh, visualize uh, an overview of your data set first, allow the user to zoom and filter, and show details on demand. Uh, that was uh, updated in 2010 by uh, Daniel Keim, one of the most famous European uh, visual analytics uh, researchers, uh, when he said that, analyze first, then show the important, allow the user to zoom, filter, analyze, analyze further, uh, further, and show details on demand. 
so uh, why I'm showing you this? To show you where we are on the map, what do we do in Limerick? Uh, our main work is on the overview. Not that the other things are not important, they are very important. Uh, but when we, do, when we do research and when we want to educate PhD students and have, have them uh, write PhD uh, thesis, we have to find a very specific problem and go very deep into it. So um, going and solving the whole thing is a very good, is a, uh, is a very good approach for a, a company that provides a product. They have to, they have to provide the whole uh, process. Uh, well, when we do research, we usually focus on one little problem. We go as deep as possible and find some novel solution to that problem. Uh, so this is where our focus is on overviews. And we do some preliminary analysis as well uh, before we show the overview. Um, uh, on, from another point of view, the, um, what we do, uh, the visual analytics is a multidisciplinary uh, field. Uh, that involves uh, data uh, analysis, data mining, machine learning, uh, interaction design, as well as uh, information visualization. What we do is the visualization mainly. We, we, we don't do, uh, in my group specifically, we don't do work on interaction, and we do some data analysis as well. So it's data analysis plus visualization. Uh, I'm going to show to you two, the results of two recent projects that we have been working on. The first one has this uh, very academic uh, long name, Vertex Neighboring Multi-Level Force Directed Graph Drawing for Visualization of Large Networks. Uh, it's something that uh, we are going to present next week, actually, at the IEEE um, SMC uh, conference in uh, Budapest this year. Uh, so uh, a network, when you visualize a network, the underlying structure of the network is something that in maths is called a graph. This is not the graph uh, that we know, uh, the graph of a function. This is a graph that is a system of vertices and links that connect those vertices that we call edges. So vertices and edges. And um, now, before I go further, I'll show you the uh, video here of uh, the most common approach towards drawing any uh, random graph. Uh, so you probably saw how this picture out of uh, chaos sprang out in some, some natural way. It moved until it took some um, more clear, uh, a clearer shape. Uh, so what happened here, um, the, the way this algorithm works is by simulating forces of attraction and repulsion between the vertices. Um, vertices which are connected, they attract each other, and there are forces of repulsion between, between each pair of vertices which are not connected to each other. This is a very common approach in, a graph, in the field of graph drawing, visualization of graphs, and it's called a force-directed approach. Um, what you saw here is a, is a tree that, uh, some tree drawing uh, alg force directed algorithm that we experimented with a few couple of years ago. Um, uh, the, uh, so in, in the larger field of uh, graph drawing on network visualization, there are a few very uh, well-known different approaches towards drawing graphs. Um, graphs can be drawn uh, in a hierarchical fashion. They can, uh, there are some spectral graph drawing approaches. And the force-directed uh, force graph drawing is probably the most successful approach towards drawing graphs. Uh, within this field, of, within this approach, there are different algorithms that um, uh, uh, can be used. They're, they're um, easily available in... Uh, uh, in uh, softwares like uh, Gephi or uh, AT&T's uh, GraphVis, or uh, in D3, you have the force-directed layout. Um, th this is the most common thing if you want to visualize uh, a graph. Uh, so some, some of those algorithms are called multi-level algorithms, and this is where our work has been in particular. This is how 
deep we go and focus into one very particular area of research. Um, so the, the multi-level force-directed graph drawing approach imagines that the graph, the graph is uh, first being coerced. There is a phase of coercing of the graph, which means grouping the vertices into super vertices, and then taking those super vertices and grouping them into super vertices again, so repeating this multiple times, uh, until we um, achieve, until we reach a point where the graph is represented only uh, with a few super vertices. Then we draw the final uh, graph, the coarse graph, with a force-directed algorithm. Uh, and then in multiple stages, we break down the super vertices into smaller super vertices, and we adjust the layout with a force-directed graph drawing algorithm until the super vertices cannot be further broken. And this is, this is, uh, this is the standard approach now towards drawing very large graphs quickly with a force-directed force approach. Uh, the difference in our, the, the way uh, we do it is that we don't use super vertices, we simplify that phase, we, we try to see what, what can we do if we drop this phase. Uh, we start with a few selected vertices, we, um, at this stage, we um, add, uh, at each next level, in multiple levels, we add their neighbors to the layout, and uh, we drop the repulsion force altogether from the algorithm. And our algorithm is faster in comparison to non-multi-level algorithms and gives good enough drawings. So we try to push here the uh, simplification, how much we can simplify the algorithm before we lose quality. And I'll show you a few examples with a well-known uh, benchmark uh, data set. Uh, so here in, in, the, in the left, you have uh, uh, the graph drawn with GraphVis, open so um, not open source, but freely available software that you can download, and you can use the standard multi-level um, state-of-the-art algorithm to draw the graph, and you see how uh, hard to read it is, and this is our algorithm, and I will go very quickly because the time is up. I will show you a few pictures. Um, and uh, the, our times are much better. And finally, just a few pictures on visu visualization of text corpora, very different, uh, very different, very different uh, problem. Uh, we, use, we, 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 we experimented with visualization of text corpora as well um, by uh, imagining that each docu document in a text corpus is a node. There, are connect uh, there is a connection between each pair of nodes, which is the similarity between them, and we use a force-directed algorithm. To the best of our knowledge, we are probably the first to try to uh, apply uh, this uh, force-directed method to, to draw uh, a corpus, and I'll show you a few pictures with the BBC, uh, with the BBC News Corpus, which uh, is taken from UCD, uh, which has uh, 2,225 documents. Um, not probably not very well can you see on this screen, uh, but here is a standard multi-dimensional scaling. Uh, with, uh, which took 450 seconds in the same computer, uh, uh, we could draw uh, the cluster of documents, uh, the clusters of documents in 50 seconds. Uh, this is with the state of the art uh, TSNE uh, uh, package in, that comes with R that anybody can download and use. Uh, it's not something that you need to uh, buy even. And that took 12 uh, minutes and 23 seconds. Well, we, we can draw the whole thing for 50 seconds and we can draw it with brighter colors. I never tried on the screen. Uh, and uh, similarly with uh, BBC Sports News Corpus, which has uh, a smaller number of documents, but we have similar results where we can draw uh, the clusters of documents much faster. And that's all. I'm sorry for time's up. Yeah. I'll ask one quick question, Nicola. Oh, please. Thank you. Thank you. Just a quick question. So um, I think you mentioned AT&T use technology like this. What, what kind of decisions are being made with graphs like this that are affecting our lives? Um, well, the decision, the decision can be, they can vary from uh, things related to healthcare, for mm -hmm. example, spread of infectious diseases, mm 
there are biological networks which are very interesting for biologists, which are um, related to how um, how things work in our body, how chemicals um, mm -hmm. interact in our bodies. The, 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 so biological networks are very big uh, application. Social networks, for example, spread of infectious disease, or uh, maybe maybe for marketing purposes as well. Very interesting yeah. talk. Thank yeah. you very yeah. much. Thank you very much. Um, so.